I've been getting a lot of questions from viewers like you about citrus problems. Questions like, why my citrus tree leaves and fruits dropping off? Or why my calamandin tree is getting taller when it's going to branch out and produce its fruit? Or why my citrus tree dying? What's wrong with it? Don't worry, I'm here today to help you take care of your citrus and show you my citrus treatment. Don't click away, be right back. Hello, happy YouTubers, this is Marcelina. Welcome to our new episode, The Citrus Treatment. How to treat problems most common to citrus. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, I'm here next to my calamandin, as you can see. My calamandin is so healthy, happy, and beautiful. Now, growing a couple citrus trees in your backyard or in your garden can be an awesome experience. Not only do they provide you fruit to make lemonade, they also are easy to grow and manage. However, there is a downside to growing citrus. Like any other fruit trees you grow in the garden that get pests and diseases, citrus trees will get pests and diseases as well. Luckily, we have the solution to our citrus problems, which I'm going to share it to you right now. If you follow my citrus treatments, you will be providing your citrus the best care. Before you do the actual treatment, you are required to do two tasks. First is to correct your watering, second is to correct your soil pH. If water and soil pH are not corrected, your citrus will suffer because they are responsible in the overall health of your tree and also responsible in the fruit production. Now, managing your water falls into how often do you water and how much. If you have a matured tree, you don't have to water frequently as opposed to the young tree. You can water your tree once a week is enough or once every two weeks. As long as when you water it, you water it deeply. When I said water it deeply, meaning you water the plant until the soil is media or the soil is completely wet and well draining. The other way to manage your watering is to install irrigation. I love the idea of installing drip system because I can control uh, the drips. So what I do here, I have my irrigation around the, around the fence and I control the drip 15 minutes per drip and in the morning and also 15 minutes drip in the evening. So that is my uh, managing the water. Other way you can do to uh, keep your soil moist is adding compost to the soil. Now there is a drawback when you add a compost in the soil. You are building up too much moisture. Now for beginners, if you guys are new to citrus, so I'm glad to have you here. So when you do add compost, because compost allows the, so the soil to, uh, to be moist uh, at all time and it doesn't uh, evaporate the water so fast. But when you add compost or layer of wood chips to your citrus, make sure you don't cover the trunk because the building up of moisture rots the trunk. So you have to push the, uh, allow five inches away from the base of the tree. So I'm going to file this one here. This is going to keep the soil moist so I don't have to water more frequent. And once the compost breaks down, it gives that uh, minerals or nutrients to the tree. So that is your uh, best nutrients to provide for your citrus. So I put a layer in there, away from the tr trunk, as you can see. So I have still space. Now make sure that the area of the base of the tree is weed free. Because if you have weeds in your tree, weeds compete nutrients so it is not the nutrients would not be equally given to your, your tree because the weeds absorb that nutrient so make sure it is a weed tree so that is the the thing that you will need to do first before the actual treatment so your pre-treatment is to check your watering so you we already check the watering and then you uh, already have this irrigation and add compost so you can keep the moisture intact without drying it so fast and make sure that you have to push the compost away five inches away from the trunk now the second uh, thing that you need to do is to check your pH and I already showed this uh, uh, information in my other video and I would 
required or encourage you guys to watch my other video i have a lot of lemon videos and i want you to watch that video in addition to this so check the ph let's check the ph here so citrus uh, prepares a slightly acidic soil so it has to be 6.5 or 6.8 now if this uh, ph is not corrected if it is too alkaline like for example this soil ph is in between 7.3 and 7.9 so that is too much of alkaline so the, the nutrients and other minerals especially nitrogen would not be available for the roots to absorb and nitrogen is very important because it is a building block in the production of chlorophyll so they undergo with that photosynthesis so i have this here you can get this i will link this prod uh, product below this video just check out guys if you need this product so what you will need you can use this one this one here has three ways you can uh, check the ph and also you can check the water and sunlight which is <laughs> great and i use this one too but let's use this one i'm going to insert this all the way down to the root zone now as you can see i will show it to you guys because it is all right so if you can see the ph here so i put two probes so you guys can check so this one here is seven is in that red line and as you can see if you can see right now is seven uh seven point five uh, no seven point zero you see that seven point zero so it's okay it's still in the base but we're going to raise a little bit so we will add uh, fertilizer containing uh, acid so let's go ahead all right so when we check our ph in this uh, kalaman then we will see that it is 7.0 so it is in the neutral side it's okay uh, it's still uh, acceptable the citrus can tolerate with that rate so what we're going to do we're going to uh, lower a little bit in this case when you lower the ph you can use vinegar it's a quick fix i have a video on that i really encourage you guys to watch that video and what i'm going to do here i'm going to lower the ph using the fertilizer containing acid so let's go ahead down here all right so i add this acidifier i'm going to add this uh, soil acidifier and i need one half cup for this tray so always uh, read the label of the bag so you can provide a good treatment to your citrus. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to remove this uh, probe. And I'm going to spread this uh, soil acidifier around the base. Now, when you apply the fertilizer, I would... Uh, recommend you guys not to dig when you do like that because citrus has a shallow hold on has a shallow uh, tree uh, roots you don't want to damage the root so you just have to scrape a little bit around it make sure that it is mixed into the soil this is a slow release so it provides us uh, slow uh, nutrients to the tree now um, Greg uh, mentioned in our previous video that you can check your pH once a month just to uh, have that monitor to monitor your tree and you will be okay so that's how you put treatment your tree before the actual so now we are done with uh, checking the water first and then the water uh, we manage the water by uh, depotering and also installing the irrigation and also providing compost so if you can create that moisture now you also we also check the pH so the pH is corrected because we use the acidifier to lower the pH range so our tree will be happy so that is your uh, pre treatment now if you don't correct your pH uh, not pH if you don't correct your watering guys most problems of yellowing leaves and uh, the formation of the fruit is most likely come from overwatering plants because 
sometimes you could also get yellowing leaves when there is a pest infestation or disease but most likely common to yellowing leaves and dropping off them prematurely is improper watering so always correct your watering water management is very important now we already uh, finish our task by correcting the water and correcting the pits now let's do the actual treatment sometimes your your tree will be infested by pests or you'll be infested by disease now there is one thing that i'm going to share with you in this video before we do use the chemicals if you are growing uh, organically and i i like to grow organics i minimize uh, using harsh chemicals now you can also provide your citrus with worm casting and this citrus i give this uh, citrus worm casting and uh, like three months ago so that's why as you can see look at the citrus is so happy look at look at the fruit is big and this is the second time i harvested bigger calamandin and so far there is no pest now adding camp uh, adding uh, worm casting just bear with me guys all right guys i'm trying to explain this in my english terms english is not my primary language but i will do my best so by adding incorporating uh, worm casting to your citrus is also helping your citrus to grow healthier and also uh, produce bigger fruit like what you see because it gives you a natural uh, good amount of nitrogen and some other traceable mineral minerals also according to the research studies that adding compost or uh, worm casting to the soil it increases chitinase and chitinase is an enzyme it's a natural enzyme now when chitinase is absorbed the roots, it repels the bugs because uh, its exoskeleton of insects contains chitin. A chitin, I'm not really explaining the whole big thing because I don't want to confuse you guys, or maybe I'm confused. <laughs> I, I, I'm not leading you into a false, uh, false statement. So um, the chitin is a huge or large polymers found and produced on this exoskeleton of insects so when they come in contact to the citrus tree when the chitinase is absorbed from the roots and delivered to the uh, to the whole tissues the insect suck the sap or nibble the leaves the chitinase which is the enzyme will degrade or destroy chitins in the uh, the skeleton's cell wall and they will die so that is a good biological control if you don't want to use a pesticide so that's what i use in my calamandin that was part of my experiment and how is earthworm uh, casting help protect the citrus against pests or diseases so so far it's healthy so the research was great <laughs> so i share it with you guys so i'd go uh, uh, have a bag of worm casting in addition to other nutrients you have because it is a natural and it, it gives the labor that uh, nutrients slowly so your tree will be absorbed that uh, all the time in the soil and also it helps erosion the soil because once it's break down it, it creates that uh, porous uh, soil texture so that is the other treatment that you can do with your citrus by adding worm casting tried so many uh, pesticides uh, in my previous years treating anything like pest and fungus and most of them did not satisfy my treatment so i use azatec and so far i have been using azatec for almost five years now but i share this time with you guys so you can uh, try it and see how it works and if you try this azatec uh, share your experience with us because it works for me and hopefully it works for you too now azatec contains azadractin that's why it stands aza that is comes from azadractin azadractin is a natural chemical found in the name neem seed that is the first squeeze that's why it is very effective and then it has also additive to it that also control the bugs so in both ways so it kills the larvae and it stops the growth hormone they don't stop their eating and then when there is a larvae that turns into adult it also kills the adult by unmasking their uh, protection like especially the aphids the aphids 
it is hard for you to control the aphids because of their protection and you have to spray more often but if you use as a tech it coats it uncoats or unmasks that protection making them vulnerable to the chemicals and then they will die but you have to do three times treatment because uh, if you just only do once it might come back again so do the treat, uh, treatment uh, in, in a 7 or 14 cycle until the pest or fungus disease are controlled or the pests are not longer there. So I will link this video, this uh, link this product. I cannot talk. <laughs> I will link this product below this video guys. Just check it out. So I would, I would uh, uh, encourage you to try and see how it works. And again, if it works for you, we would love to hear. So what you will do? Even if there is no disease, you can still pre-treatment as your management. You can just spray to the top and, you know, top that leads, something like that. And also you have to spray the bottom so that the fungus nuts, fungus nuts is number one killer of the, <laughs> of the tree or of the plants because they nibble the roots and destroy the root system, making the tree to wilt and die in the process. So to control the nuts, you can use this as a tech plus. Now, this is what I have been uh, using in my control here. Even the fungus disease, like the, the greasy spot. Now, when you treat greasy spot with this uh, as a tech, what I would do is to remove the leaves because once the leaves are infected or the branch is infected, remove that. And then after you remove, you apply the as a tech plus. Like for example, if this is infected, if this is in the leaves are turning yellow and have that greasy uh, substance, I what I would do is I have to remove the leaves and then after that I spray with azotech, you know, three times in seven, uh, seven to fourteen cycle. Now here's the important thing also that your treatment also influences your knowledge about the bugs you're treating. If you don't know the cycle of the bugs, your treatment, no, it affects your treatment because it's almost like, let's, let's put up this way, like you're taking antibiotic. Your doctor said like you have to take antibiotic within seven days and then you did not do that. You only take once and maybe sometimes you skip it. So what will happen, it becomes worse. So it's the same thing as, as the same thing as spraying uh, the chemicals to your plant to control bugs or control fungus disease. So you have to follow the direction. There's a direction in this, so you can follow it. Now, remember that Greg Seven told you that he, no matter what type of video we show, uh, we have he's going to show you the effect of Azotic Plus on the uh, on the plant that was infected. So I'm going to show you it to you guys. As you can see, this is the result. Now you see that there is no aphids or there is no mealybugs. It is really controlling by using this as a tech because there are two chemical, there are two active chemicals in this spray that target the larvae, so kill the larvae, and also to, to kill the adults so that they don't have to mate again. So as you can see here, this one is turning yellow, so I will remove this because they don't uh, go back to normal color, and, you know, to, they don't go back to green again. So you have to remove that and now it produces a new foliage. But even though there is no infestation right now, I have to make sure that the water is corrected because one of the most major reason why your plant is sick and vulnerable to pests and in the pests and disease attack your plant until they die because they are stressed so that is your number one is to make sure that your plant is not stressed out so limit the stress label as you can now what i have done here and let me show you okay what i have used here to uh, minimize transplant shock and also minimize the damage in the roots i use mycoplast and uh, if you want to get this product, I will link below this video. So just check the link description. I use Microplus when I transplant young seedlings and also when I transplant trees because it allows me to limit or reduce the, the shock of the tree during movement. And it, has, uh, it is a, a natural fungus and it helps uh, transplant shock and also it helps protecting the roots against pathogens. 
Okay, so is this information help you? If you if you like this video, guys, hit like and also share it, share it with your friends. I don't know why I cannot talk today. I think I am just tired. Okay, so this is for today, guys, and hope this video again this video help you. And uh, if you have any problems of your citrus, just write that uh, in your comments. Maybe we can work together and maybe uh, give you another alternatives to help minimize problems of our citrus. It's springtime guys, uh, first day of spring. Oh my god, so this is our springtime. Now, when are you going to pre-treatment your tree? You can pre-treatment your tree in the spring and in summer because these are months tree are, oh no, trees are active. They're active growth. So once they have this nice healthy foliage and then it here's the stress coming in, then the pest will get into your tree and then attack your tree and that's it. So you would not be able to grow and manage your citrus if you don't follow this, these steps. Whew. It's long, huh? <laughs> All right, guys. So again, this is Marceline at CashewGreens.com. Check the uh, the link below and also check CashewGreens.com for a discount of um, any plants because it is spring and this is the time to start planting. So I can be CashewGreens.com. Thank you again. Just Thank take you. my hand and fly up through the dreams where the skies are so clear with you i want to stay with you with you